Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be talking to you guys about three different methods that I use to be able to code faster. It doesn't matter what language you use or what you're, you're coding. It can be games, it can be web dev, it can be apps, whatever. Um, I'm just going to talk about all the different methods and ways I found throughout my, my coding journey um, that helped me improve productivity and also allow me to code a lot faster than people who don't use those methods. My hope is that um, you guys probably know some of the, the, the things I'm going to talk about, but also we'll be able to learn um, something new that you can implement whenever you're going to be coding in the future so that it can help you as well and you can gain value from this video. So with that in mind, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it because it would help my channel grow. We're hitting 25k subs uh, really quick and I, I'm really grateful for that. So if you could leave a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed, I would massively appreciate it. So yeah, let's get into the video. So the first thing I really want to talk about and just get it out of the way is um, how to properly use shortcuts. And I'm not going to be talking about um, code editors like if you want to really write code a lot faster, you can use something like Vim, which is very popular. But I feel like the learning curve for that is pretty high, so I won't be mentioning that. What I will be mentioning is uh, getting used to all the different shortcuts and um, kind of uh, things you can do with your keyboard that uh, try to keep you away from your mouse as much as possible. This is something very common in programming. You don't really want to be uh, using your mouse a lot because it just wastes more time. I, I know it seems like it's, it doesn't seem like it, it wastes that much time, but it eventually does. Um, you want to keep your hand in your keyboard. You want to do most of what you can with your keyboard so that you can increase your productivity and, and write code faster. So I'm going to go over two or three um, shortcuts that I feel are very important and that I feel that are essential for you to know. So I will go over some of the shortcuts that I think are really useful. And the first one that I really want to go over is the fact that a lot of people don't know that you can actually navigate throughout files um, without actually needing to use your mouse. So what I mean by that is take into account a, a simple project like this one right here. Um, if I open the Explorer, you'll see I have a couple of files, which obviously they're just for uh, as, a, as an example. But um, imagine they are useful and we want to navigate throughout them. Instead of having to come over here, um, searching for through my project to find the file, maybe I have like a bunch of folders and everything. Um, I can actually do this without even uh, touching my, my hand in the, in the mouse. I can just come over here to my VS Code. Imagine I'm coding over here and I just press Control P. You'll see that it will start searching for files. And if I want to search for file two, I can just say file two and just press enter and it will automatically open for me. I find this very useful, especially when you're working in a project that is huge, like in a job. Um, it, is, it will be very useful for you and um, it, it will just save you a lot of time, especially um, because you, you won't be needing to try to search for the file, which is something that I find very useful and I use it probably every day when I code. So these were the shortcuts that I really wanted to show you guys. And now let's get into the second advice that I want to give to you guys. Okay, so now that we went over all the shortcuts that I find are, are pretty good there, there's a lot more obviously, but um, those are the ones that I feel like I wanted to talk about. Let's get into the second piece of advice that I can give to you guys. So number two in my list would be um, using extensions in your favor. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of being very specific here with something like VS Code, which is the most popular code editor out there because it will improve your performance and it will definitely increase the amount of code you can write and some sort of range of time, right? Um, and when I talk about extensions, I'm, I'm going to try to stay away from the most like obvious ones like Prettier. Prettier is an amazing extension that definitely helps your time um, like saving stuff, um, maybe like editing and formatting stuff. But I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about one specific one, which a lot of you guys have been asking me in my previous videos, what's the name of the extension. The extension that I'm talking about is GitHub Copilot. And I know some of you guys might not be able to get it uh, like instantly because I think there's a wait list. But the wait list for me went pretty fast. Um, like less than a week, I was able to get the extension. And believe it or not, it is one of the best extensions I have on VS Code. I'm playing out clips over here of me basically just um, using the extension on my day-to-day -day work. Um, you can see that 
it helps a lot because it, it not only memorizes what you you write, it gives you so many suggestions, um, and you can just clip tab, like keep pressing tab on your keyboard and just auto filling a lot of stuff. Especially if you use a framework or you code in a language that is uh, pretty widely used, um, there's already the AI that supports and powers GitHub Copilot already knows a, a lot of the commonly written pieces of code, so it will definitely um, suggest something that is applicable for your case. And I know some people are scared of an AI helping you to code, but don't be. Um, I feel like the purpose of GitHub Copilot is uh, to help you and not replace you. So um, I feel like using the extension will definitely improve you a lot. Um, I'm not sure if you can use it for jobs. Um, I'm just not sure about that. But um, if you're coding side projects or you're just learning how to code, um, use that because it will help you a lot. And now let's get into the last thing that I want to talk about, which is something that I I always wanted to create a tutorial on, um, but I never did because I feel like it is too small of a topic to make a tutorial on. So I'll just include it right here, um, which is creating your own snippets. So if you've coded um, in, uh, let's say React in the past, you've probably used this snippet, which is like you write one or two letters, an acronym for something, you press enter, and it will autofill a bunch of code for you. Um, there's a bunch of extensions out there that already have pre-built um, snippets for you. But my recommendation is um, if you have a certain way to write code and you want to uh, like customize it for yourself, just create your own snippet because it isn't hard at all. Especially if you're using VS Code, um, VS Code has an amazing system for writing snippets. And I'll show you guys exactly how you can do it right now. Okay, so... I'm gonna use this part as a tutorial on how to create your own um, snippet. Um, I'm using the same file we used in the previous examples. But basically, uh, when you have a VS Code um, open up into your project, what you can do is you can just click on this um, thing over here, which is the, the manage button, and then go to user snippets. And this should appear um, in, in your screen, right? You should see, um, you probably shouldn't see these things over here because I think I created those snippets um, or some were also downloaded um, from extensions. But uh, you should probably see a bunch of these names over here and you should see that you can create a new global snippet file, which is what we want to click. When you click on this, um, it will ask you for a name, uh, so a name of your snippet. And technically what I want is, in our case, as an example, I want to create a snippet that literally just creates a function um, using the arrow syntax like this one over here. And at the end, it will return something like it will return the string hello world. Um, this is a pretty dumb snippet, but um, you will be like, it will help to show you guys how to customize and how to make it look like a, a good snippet for you. So um, let's the first thing we need to do is type a name, I'll just type it uh, function return hello world, <laughs> something like this. Uh, it looks kind of dumb, but let me just name it like this. And you should see that when I press enter, um, it creates a JSON file, which um, will be the, the way we make our snippet work. This is how you actually create the snippet. So you can see it gives you some um, instructions over here. And what I want to do is I want to just uncomment this over here because this will be how we're going to write it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to delete this scope thing over here. So the scope is basically... Um, think about it this way. Um, if you list out the technologies, it will only allow the snippet to be in those technologies. But um, I really don't really care about that. Um, let's just delete it. Technically, this like this snippet is just for JavaScript, but I don't want to I don't want to care a, lo a lot about this. So I just usually remove it. Then I give it a name. In our case is uh, return hello world function or create a return hello function, something like that, right? Just a, a name for you to kind of know what it is. It, this doesn't affect anything. It just gives you an idea of what the snippet is. And then this is the important part. This is a prefix that is going to be used. So instead of writing the whole function, we need to write an acronym that when we write that acronym, it will automatically generate the snippet. So I'm going to say um, something like create hello world function. So CHWF. When we type this and press enter, it should create all of the function and it should be a lot faster, right? Then we have the body. The body is exactly what you might imagine. It's the, ex the like the code that you want to write. So the way this works is it is an array. And inside of it, um, each element should be a string. And the string should be divided in a, in a way such that um, every element you add will generate a new line in, in your code. So for example, for us, we want to create a function. 
and we'll just start writing the how a function is usually created in JavaScript. So let's say const, then the name of the function, since it's like, we're not like, we don't know yet. So we'll just give it a, a general name, like function name, like this is it's what we're going to write, then we're going to set it equal to whatever you want, just to generate the first line of a, an actual JavaScript function, then we'll just um, jump to the next line. And the next line will be what you return. So I'll just write return um, the string saying Hello World, but right returning a string here is kind of weird, because this is already a string. So I would use um, if you're trying to generate a string inside of here, I'll just use something that is not this kind of quotes. So for example, the single quote is different from the double quote. So you can just say you're generating um, a Hello World string by using the single quote. And at the end, we need to put a new line to close our function like this. So this is kind of the code that we're writing the name of the function inside of it, we're returning Hello World and at the end, we're putting the the like the brackets, right the the square brackets, uh, no, the curly braces, but um, then we can write a description, we'll just say, um, this creates a function in JavaScript, something like this in JavaScript. Um, and then uh, we can just save it. And now it's it's basically done. It's use it's useful, I can come to my index.js. Um, I'll just delete this over here. And if I write the acronym that we did created over here, which is chwf, um, you can see that it disappears. And when I press enter, it should generate the function for us automatically the same function that we wrote. So that means that if we keep writing this, we can keep generating the function for us, which is which is honestly amazing. There's some things you can even do to, um, to make this look better. For example, the name of this file over here, it's called index.js. Um, I can grab that name um, and use it inside of my inside of my snippet um, and customize it for the file you're you're inside, which is how they use to create snippets and react components, for example, it's 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 uh, that's exactly how they do it. For example, if we want to make this work, uh, what we can do is, uh, let's just um, come over here to our return statement and instead of returning Hello World, let's make it so that it will return a message saying the name of the file you are n is and then we want to put the name of the file. So how do we get the name of the file that we're currently using and not only the name of the file, but I don't want to have the extension the dot js, I just want to have the name index, right? How do I do that? Well, it already has a bunch of built in um, ways to make something like this work. For example, if we want to get the base name for our file name, so like the, the base part, which is the index part, we can just um, use uh, snippet variables inside of here by using the money sign like this over here, and um, open and closing curly braces. And inside of it, we can say that we want to grab for the file, the file name, and we want to grab the base part of it. If you want to check out all the variables you can access in VS Code snippets, you can just go to the documentation. But this is a very useful one, because you can see that if I save this right now, and I come over here, and I put the command, which is, um, I think it's C, um, F, no, it's C H W F. Now it says the name of the file you're in is index. If I did this on, uh, I don't know, file four, um, you would see that it would say the name of the file is file four. So it's working perfectly. Now this is basically it for um, how to create snippets. And I really hope you guys start doing it because it is very useful. Uh, it allows you to customize a lot of things and allows you to write code a lot faster. So yeah, guys, that's that's the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment which one to see next. Um, give me suggestions. Um, let me know. Let's have a discussion in the description about what snippets or, or what 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 kind of different approaches you would take to this video. Um, what helps you when you're coding. Um, and if you find any of the advices that I gave valuable, I really appreciate you watching. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.